Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is our uh, daily pitching preview show. Right now we're taking a look at the card for uh, Saturday, July 4th, and we are talking with Troy West from AllPlaysWin.com. We know he killed it in the NBA playoffs this year. We know what he's done uh, long-term in football, college, and pro. Troy West, how are you doing in baseball this year? I think that's what uh, one question probably on people's minds. Yeah, no, it's been an outstanding baseball season so far, Pete. Started out a little bit slow, but when we really got into this selective mode, you know, potentially even three to five plays per week. It really pays off. Baseball, there's a lot of profitability, but you sure as heck got to pick your spots. Yes. We're one of the best in the business, Pete, when it comes to any sport. But we've really dialed in as of late in baseball. Well, the first thing I want to ask you about is, uh, you know, Felix Hernandez. You are Mr. Seattle. Of our first-time viewers know that Troy West has a particularly good read on Seattle area teams. And uh, if you're picking your spots, you know, maybe you've been picking the Felix's spots. Sometimes he's great. Sometimes he is getting hit. Right now he's on a notable good game slash bad game pattern. That's been going for seven games in a row now. And uh, his last game was pretty good. If that pattern holds up, then maybe he's due to get hit here a little bit by Oakland, which can't happen when they're at home. They have a lineup that can be productive at home. And then on the other side, uh, this guy Graveman, he's a sinker baller who's actually found a groove. He's actually been quite effective and consistent recently. So if Felix Hernandez is due to have an off start, should we actually maybe expect a small starting pitching edge for Oakland here, Graveman, Graveman versus uh, Hernandez? What do you think, Troy? No, I'm going against the, the trend here, Pete. Felix Hernandez has had a lot of success against this Oakland lineup. This Oakland lineup doesn't necessarily have a lot of firepower. And Felix has had a lot of success in Oakland as well. This is one of his favorite teams to pitch against throughout his career. So I think, I think maybe a shot at the under, if you look at Seattle's unders throughout the course of the year, You've made a shit ton of money if you're betting Seattle unders, and that's where we've made a lot of our money this year as well. So if I had to do anything with this game, it would be the under or even side with Seattle. Seattle's starting to play a little bit better. Uh, they've been very inconsistent this year, but they looked outstanding their last two games against the Padres. So we'll see if it carries into this series. But for me, if that under is right around seven, seven and a half, maybe even six and a half, I'd take a shot with the under. So you're expecting generally a pretty good start from Felix here then? I am. I absolutely expect some good All start. All right. And then one guy I think I'm expecting a good start from, Jason Hamill for the Cubs, right? He's had a good year. He had kind of a tough time uh, uh, his last start, but that was uh, due to rain. There was a rain-shortened start. He gave up a bunch of runs. He still had seven strikeouts. I'm thinking he bounces back here. You know, Miami, we know Stanton is out. Hamill's good. Coming off of a, of, of a tough start, Miami doesn't have much offensively right now. And then on the other side, uh, this guy Jared Cosart is, is coming back, and he's had some health issues recently. He had vertigo. What the hell is that? I don't know what that is, but that does not sound good. Uh, you know, he wasn't that great to begin with. Now he's coming back dealing with the vertigo, whatever the hell that is. I'm expecting a good start from Hamill. Jared Cosart should probably get hit a little bit. Maybe the Cubs are going to be a great bet on July 4th. What do you think? Yeah, the Cubs could be a good bet. Jared Kozar, before going to injury, was actually not doing too bad. This guy's a guy obviously pitched really well in Houston last year. Very, you know, inconsistent at times, but really started to make a name for himself towards the end of last year. And he's pitched okay for the Marlins. But like you said, I don't claim to be a doctor. I don't know what the hell he's coming what back. What the hell from. is vertigo? Like we'll he can't to, balance? We'll have to Google that one, Pete. We'll have to Google that one. I don't know. I think it's a song out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, we'll have to we'll have to do our research on, on that injury. For me, it's a pass. The Cubs, you know, Hamill's Hamill's one of those guys, he is very consistent. I think you may get a good start for Hamill. But this Cub baseball team, it seems like when I bet them they lose. When I don't bet them they win. So uh, they've been inconsistent for me. I haven't seen anything solid to really bet them right now, so I'm going to stay away from it. Right. Well, I, I hope the line isn't too much in the stratosphere, but if it's anything under minus 150, I think I'm going to be, be a pretty big on the Cubs there. And then Zach Greinke, right? Flat out awesome. I mean, does it even really matter who he's facing, who's on the other side? Matt Harvey is going to be on the other side for the Mets. We know the Mets don't have much... Um, Offensively, but Granke has been ridiculous. If you throw out his one start at Coors, which, you know, Coors starts are a little bit uh, unique, uh, in his last 10 games, besides the Coors start, he's given up just seven earned runs total and eight runs. Although the Dodgers still just five and five in those games, but Granke, it hasn't been his fault. He's just been absolutely unhittable when he's been on the mound. Uh, you know, what do you think, what do we expect from him here against the Mets? Yeah, this has been one of my favorite guys to bet all year. This is another guy that we've really profited off this year. Problem is his lines have really creeped into those minus 200 range. So every once in a while, I'm not a big run line better, but every once in a right. while you have to stick on that minus one and a half run line. This particular start, it looks like a big start for him, you know, at home against a bad, bad hitting lineup. I would have to lean. I think you're going to get a high, high line. I don't know. You may not because he is going against Matt Harvey. Harvey's been inconsistent. Well, you may see that the lowest 
total of the year. Yeah. You're probably looking at a five and a half, maybe even five, which is a huge rarity, but you may see it. Um, I would lean Dodgers versus leaning under just because I think the Dodgers could get enough done to get Granky the win. And then I want to ask you about Toronto at Detroit. You know, we know that Toronto is absolutely uh, awesome against lefties, right? They crush lefties. Here, though, they're going up against a good one, David Price. Who's going to win this showdown, the Toronto lineup or David Price? You know, I, I love betting David Price. I know at times he can be inconsistent as well, but you got a great pitcher against a great lineup. You're interesting to see where this line's at. Detroit not playing very well. They've looked really, really bad against Pittsburgh. Maybe Price is the guy that lists the Detroit Tigers. I would have to go with the Detroit Tigers here. All right, Troy West from allplayswin.com. Thanks so much for your thoughts. Talk to you again very soon.